Hello everyone, um, here is Strat Chat. So if you're watching on Twitch, um, welcome. Um, basically we do this every Friday. Um, I do have it as a scheduled as 5.30, every 5.30 on Friday. And um, I don't know if it's gonna completely work out during the summer, it might just be easier to do it earlier. So that's why we're doing it at three and it's because I also have other things going on. Um, but yeah, the basic thing is, is today we're going to be talking about the incoming meta. Um, probably the most important question to actually be talking about. And so we're going to be covering Baguette, and we're actually going to be covering some Orissa stuff going on. There's some Orissa comps coming in through the back door um, that people aren't really noticing, and a lot of teams are picking up Orissas. A lot of good teams are picking up Orissas in their games. So it's going to be interesting to see. Um, but yeah, first thing we need to talk about is why does Baguette um, counter dive? And so the main thing is, oh, also, by the way, um, I can take questions on Twitch live. If you, anyone on YouTube who's watching this later um, has questions, just put in the comments and I'll actually answer for you at a later time. But it'll, it, it's kind of weird. It's live, but not live, um, depending on where you're looking at it upon. Um, but yeah. So, why does... Here, here's a question. Okay. Why, why do you keep calling her Baguette? Because <laughs> everyone messes up her name and doesn't like the, what people call her. So, it's just much more fun to call her Baguette. Because there's... It was originally Bridget. Everyone was saying Bridget. And then it was Brigitta. And then it was Brigitta. And then it was Brigette. And then there was... I think there's actually a, a, a meme out there now of, like, the the different minds and the pronunciations of, like, Brigitte and then um, Bridget and then Brigitte and then it had, like, um, Torb Lady as the last one. Um, but, yeah, I like Baguette personally. And I think, I think we've been going around and have spread in the word of, the word of Torb um, by calling her Baguette. But yeah, um, we're kind of bad that way. So yeah, why does bag a counter dive? And it's pretty, th there's three main factors. And the one of the big ones that people kind of overlook is her armor. Um, so if you use E, you give armor to people. And basically what happens is people um, that dive, like Winston, um, can't do a lot of damage against armored targets. <laughs> Um, nice salute there. Um, but yeah, you can't do a lot of damage against armored targets. Same thing with Genji um, and and so on and so forth. So you can't get that very clean one-shot ability on it. Plus, she's really good at what a lot of people like to call peeling. And the main idea is she can turn around and just b basically peel um, a dive off of a target so like a dive tries to jump in she turns around and she pulls them off of their their target protecting that person and so that's why people are using her a lot as a tank actually but um besides that there's a couple of reasons that help her against dive as well and it's her shift and her right click so garrett if you can um like show a winston dive and i'll try to hit you out of the air so basically, knocks him back, and I get healing as well. So he'll try to jump on me, and I'll just, boom, knock him out of the air every single time. So that's something that's really good for um, baguettes, is to get that hit over and over and over again to knock the Winston back. Now, Winston's the only one that really gains any effect from getting knocked back mid-dive, because um, his um, jump is basically... he arcs and it, it, it's kind of like a weird way of how it works because he when he jumps um all of his impulse is at the start and then he kind of just falls for the rest of the time whereas like diva she's constantly driving almost um genji can get knocked back and stuff like that but the main person that this counters is winston then the right click the shield bash counters everything else so you move forward quite a ways and you stun whoever you hit and so it's pretty decent so yeah tr try to fly towards me and i'll hit you with the shift to kind of just show 
See? But I can stun her out of it like that. Um, another good thing is to make sure that you're bashing people off the side so that they end up just falling and not landing. Because even if you stun per someone, they can still move after that short period of time. Um, but yeah, like with her ultimate, um, what we're seeing, seeing is, is that she gets up the armor and the small but consistent damage sources like Moira and Winston can't really do a lot through it. Um, now to the next topic is her stunning. Yeah. Um, Here's a question. Yeah. How does Diva's ult, how is it affected by the stun and the shift? So stunning doesn't do anything. Um, I don't believe, I don't think you can cancel it. I don't think you can cancel it at all. I think they consider it as a transformational uh, I'm not sure completely because, well, no, yeah, it is a transformation ult. It's not a, um, but yeah, I can't be stunned out of, um, but you can hit her mech midair and launch it another way. So do you have your ult? Of course not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll hit you so I can get healing. Okay. I'm about to die. Okay. Let me heal up a little bit. Do you have your ult? Nope. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're... I'm, I'm just dying. <laughs> I'm trying to charge your ultimate. <laughs> okay, let's see if it works. Okay, you might want to like hide behind a wall. Yeah, I know. I have a yeah. shield, so it'll work. It'll yeah. Really far back so you can hit. Yeah, let's see. Nope. Nope, can't. All right. I imagine if it's falling out of the sky, I can, though. I think that's the difference. But if it's still, if the mech's still moving, I can't. So that's one thing to keep in mind as well. Um, we covered stuns, uh, mainly just making sure that you stun people and... Genji tries to ult, you stun him, and everyone just focuses him. Um, just a lot of baguette is is using your abilities on high value targets. So you shift high value targets, you right click high value targets. Um, a fun thing I really like doing is on Hanamura, on defense. If um, second point, if you're up on the high ground and they try to go in through the main doorway, you can actually shift. And knock one of their people into that, in, in into the pit, and then you can jump down and and shield bash someone and stun them maybe out of ultimate or something. I have I I have had one time where I've knocked a Reinhardt off, and then everyone behind died except the Roadhog who was ulting. So I jumped down and shield bashed him. So it was pretty sweet. Um, now the armors the armor of course countering one shot. So that's basically why Baguette's um, doing good, and a lot of the reasons is, of course, how she is played. So she's being played, in some cases, as either a second support, well, another support, or another off tank. So people are playing her to, to use as peel, and there's pluses and minuses to playing her as an off tank. Um, the minus, of course, is you have less um, health with your tanks. But the plus is, is you have less health to give in accordance with um, ult charge. Um, of course, with their shield, you can block a lot of ult charge um, gain as well. They have to hit you directly to get ult charge. So it's pretty sweet to have that. So it's just kind of that balance. And a lot of pros are, are using her as just the off tank because in a lot of cases, they don't take that much damage in the first place. Plus, as you're healing, you're kind of making up for that. So um, her healing overall, I call as a battle of attrition. It's kind of interesting, um, but yeah. But, um, and then the her ult um, is kind of a semi-defensive ult, and I think that's a good thing as well. We've talked about how her ult's a semi-defensive ult, mainly just because it's able to counter stuff, um, but it's not really an all, all counter, very similar to how... Lucio's drop the beat doesn't counter um, some ultimates. You have to be very precise with it. 
You know, I kind of see it as an offensive bolt too. Yeah. Just because it allows that engage to happen. Like you can charge it up before you engage and go in with more health. It's not like a mm -hmm. Lucio bolt where it just decays over time. Yeah. And a common thing that people are doing is they're using it out of fights. And the reason is, is because um, people who are really good at baguette feel confident in actually charging their ultimate every single fight so the idea is as you jump in um and you fight you get baguette ult you after the fight or i i would honestly prefer towards the end of the fight to clean it everything up um using your ult and so that everyone has the armor coming into the next fight but of course there's some ptr changes that will actually lessen that impact overall and make it so that you want the armor to continue gaining as as time goes on because a lot of stuff with um with her ultimate and armor gain is based off of um of course all of that chart the um uh, the whole comp long time ago of the full hold comp where you had the symmetra give shields to everyone and then torbjorn would give armor to everyone and you would have people with like a hundred health extra that was way long ago and then when they gave her her shield barrier um then that helped as well is there a counter to the counter dive um a lot of it's it's very interesting so sometimes you can do a counter dive and what happens is is that people um it, you have to run counter dive correctly because there's sometimes where you don't counter dive enough um, and they can still get stuff done and you're not really doing the good job. But usually you'll see in a counter dive is a lot of, um, stun heavy people. And that's what we're seeing a lot in, um, current, um, Overwatch contenders teams and what they're doing. And some teams have been scrimming and stuff like that. We're seeing a lot of stun and that's why a lot of people are saying they're done playing Overwatch because they don't like the stun. Plus, Reinhardt's in a really bad spot at the moment, and people are trying to force him into the meta. Um, but yeah, usually it's it's people like Farah and Junkrat who have high damage and high CC, um, basically because these are more death ball style. So what you want to do is you want to do more damage to them. Um, her left click, of course, you get health during it, and it's just good to make sure you, you're hitting constantly. If you're not getting shot, make sure you're always proccing that, getting that up. Um, shield, don't overuse it. Um, and pretty much, there's a cool trick that I like to do where you do the shield bash combo, where, where you can actually quickly shield bash, and it allows you to move forward faster, and I use it as like an extra ability um to for mobility um a lot of the times it when i'm explaining it to people of the best way to play her i usually say player like you would play genji where you're like jumping around hitting and then you like dash and then get into position and then you do do stuff with that um or you use bash to finish out a kill or stun someone um, shift is just good to constantly do to proc your healing. Just all your abilities you almost want to have off of cooldown except your shield bash sometimes. Um, sometimes you'll want your shield bash if you are expecting someone to ult. It's a good time to block that. Um, her ult we've covered. So let's go ahead of people she pairs with. So I personally like pairing her with Ana. Because a big problem with Brigitte is she has small, she has a very small range of damage and a small range of, well, not necessarily a small range of healing, but she has to be in the fight to actually get anything done. So I like Ana because she is the longest range healer. And people forget that Ana can basically hit scan support. Um, she doesn't have to be right next to people. Um, I like Hog with her mainly just because. Um, you can hook, bash, bash, hook. Um, I could shield bash a Reinhardt and the hog can hook him. Um, pretty sweet with that. Um, Rhine, this is where things get interesting and I'm glad you picked Rhine. So, Rhine combos with her pretty well. But it's in the reverse style as well. So, in a Reinhardt v. Reinhardt fight, and I'll pretend like I'm the Reinhardt. 
So what you want to, what ends up happening is that the shields are facing each other, and you're kind of in like this, this like duel, and then you're just waiting for someone to drop their shield to ult, and that's pretty much how it goes. But with Brigitte, what can happen is if your Ryan has ult, the Brigitte can, Brigitte can just do this, and then the Ryan ults, and it's very consistent, very powerful too. Um, there's a couple of issues with this though. It's usually painfully obvious when the baguette's going to do this. Um, but there's not a lot of counterplay besides just killing her. The reverse problem is, is the other Reinhardt and baguette can easily do this. So it ends up just becoming more of a who can do it first. Um, which then just becomes the old meta with um, Reinhardt v Reinhardt duels is basically who can earth shatter first so kind of a lot of people are trying to force Reinhardt into these and i don't really like it personally um could you by chance switch to orissa so i can make a statement with orissa thanks man um on the reverse side is orissa and personally i think she does better with an orissa and it's because the orissa doesn't get countered by um, a baguette. The Riss is completely okay not having a baguette. And especially since Lucio's not currently um, being played that often, which is another issue. Um, since he's not being played that often, then you're not having to worry about very bad rushdowns. Um, did you go? Oh, you went to go around the high ground. Oops. Hi. Um, okay, you can just. Yeah, we can go into a position you can put down your shield anywhere pretty much and then stand behind it like you're protecting okay so stand there stand eh, move move your move, uh, eh, th thanks um so this one's pretty easy to explain um so yeah shift doesn't go through it um but left click does but here's the other thing if i do this okay that was bad timing <laughs> That was bad timing. Okay, if I do this, her shield doesn't drop. And there's a lot of times in which... See if you can time Fortify to stop me. Okay, never mind. No, you can't. Okay. But a lot of it is her shield doesn't drop. Yeah, and that doesn't... Fortify just protects her. So I like her a lot more, especially since she can do range damage to the shield. Um, see, look. Look how fast it goes down. And my shield is almost gone. And so basically I have a timer. But if he was playing Reinhardt, I don't have a timer. I can just wait as long as I want. But with her, I have a timer in which I can do something. And that's why um, she's really good. Plus, her Fortify works really well with her Shift. Boom. I, I can just Shift whoever she's Fortifying. Um, do some damage in there. That doesn't do anything either. just does damage. So it's pretty slick. Um, I like it. And of course, extra armor on the Orisa is better because when she fortifies, everything becomes better. And if you're playing like a bunker comp or something like that, protecting her in the back line is pretty sweet. Plus, I believe the range to heal on Baguette is... I, be I believe if I was standing here hitting her, I could heal people near that edge. So... If we were playing like a two lanterns comp, I could actually be healing the Orisa in the back line by doing damage in the front line. So that's why I like the Orisa more, and that's why I say a lot of people are screwing up when they're trying to force um, a Reinhardt into the comp, especially since it just becomes a Reinhardt v Reinhardt match. And if the other team's playing Reinhardt, then you can still shield bash him and pull him around and just destroy his life. There's there's a lot of counters to Reinhardt at the moment, and it's not that not that hard to do something devastating to him besides the shield bash combo. Um, yeah. Uh, moving on. Issues she has. She, of course, has the range and her healing impact, and that's why a lot of teams are playing um, triple support comps. Um, basically using her as a tank or a support, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the deal with her is they're not using her as a support. They're using her as a tank because people, people only use tanks 
for crowd control most of the times. That's why um, uh, May usually jumps into that position is because it's crowd control based, not health based most of the time, um, except if you're just trying to make sustain. Um, covering current PTR changes. Oh yeah. Um, counters as well as of course Farrah and Junkrat. Um, because it's hard for her to hit it, hit her out of the sky. And the shield basically doesn't do anything if... Yeah, look. It's just... If, if I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> basically, yeah. She can... She can end up hitting the ground underneath me and just doing a ton of damage still. But, um, yeah, you kind of have to hit the fair out of the sky. But, yeah, current PTR changes with her. Um, recently, she's had her shield bash, like, um, hitbox decreased. Um, which actually isn't that bad. Because it used to be a thing that you could do this. Wait, nope, you still can. Um... But it used to be astronomical to the point of you could be aiming at the Reinhardt and someone would be next to the Reinhardt and you'd hit the Reinhardt, th that person instead, instead of what you wanted. So that was a big thing. Um, people said it was a nerf. I say it's a buff because her hitbox is still astronomical, as you can see. Um, all it did was make it so that you can be more precise. Um, plus, hitbox changes basically only benefits... It only um, causes problems for people who um, aren't really that good anyways. So it doesn't really cause any problems for, for people who are actually good. You're never going to see a pro go, Ah, oh, bummer, they decreased the hitbox. I guess I can't play them anymore. Um, except if it's Doomfist, but that's the reason because he had so many bugs. The hitbox was causing so many problems. Um... At the moment, she has a decrease, well, an increase to her shield bash cooldown. At the moment, it's six seconds, um, but on PTR, it's eight seconds. Um, then her ultimate, um, you know how it increases up to 150 extra armor and then caps there? It now goes to 100, so that's why we said the idea of ulting after a fight might not be that best because the um, value is decreased. So you just might want to ult during the fight. Yeah, that's usually where I've been, is ult um, middle of the fight um, to just kind of sustain. A lot of her is Battle of Attrition, um, where you're healing more um, over time, but you're not having instant impact of healing. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, so, another counter I'd like to just throw out there is actually Ana, just for her biotic grenade. Yeah. Because it takes away all of the sustain she has. Yeah. In an instant. Yeah, because... And this was a thing that, was, that people forgot about. Um, way back when Triple Tank was still kind of a thing... Um, because triple tank was a thing and quad tank was a thing and then dive became a thing. Well, um, interesting fact is that, um, the triple tank and quad tank has come back over time. Moira was one, but she was still there, but a lot of the counters, um, especially with the Moira quad tank comp that was pretty popular was to just nade, um, that comp. And basically, they can't get the healing out of the Moira, and you just kill everyone, and it becomes an ult battery. Yeah. And now I can't heal anymore. Um, oh, and we have Abram. That's nice. Um, but yeah, so... Besides current PTR changes, um, we also have um, Baguette comps. So, comps she's currently being used in. I know we use her in an 033 comp. Um, so, Garrett, can you explain a little bit about the 033 comp? Uh, insanity, a little bit, and... No, okay. Um, well, basically, it's just a really high sustain comp. Yeah. Uh, mainly ran with uh, Moira, Lucio, and Baguette. Or a Zen instead of the Lucio. Yeah. 
uh, with the Lucio, you get three types of passive healing. Moira uh, actually heals, it does an AoE heal over time. And you have the Baguette healing and the Lucio healing. And you'll be at about 75 healing a second with all the passive healing going around. And so if yeah. they can't focus, if they can't target call, then you basically win the battle of attrition. And that's flat out. And that 75 healing is not taken into account her um, Baguette's E ability, um, Moira's healing orb, or Moira's um, left click. It's only taken into account or the... Boost. Yeah, or Lucia's boost. So it's taken into account um, Baguette's passive healing when she does damage, Lucia's passive healing without speed boost, well, without the boost overall. And it's taken into account that extra health that um, a Moira gives... Um, after she's healed so that's basically minimum health that you're going to be taking um, pretty much during the time and then the problem with the 033 comp is even though you win the sustain battle you charge up the other team's ult it's like crazy yeah so that that's kind of the downfall you can do a one two three comp and run the baguette as a um off tank and then you still have the three uh tank kind of style there and then yeah. the extra damage to finish people off yeah basic yeah. basically you you run a um dps um instead of um i believe one of the tanks but yeah that's pretty much pretty much the gist there and then the other one that teams are using um other teams are using is the 213 comp where they're running um two dps a reinhardt two supports which are usually a moira and zenyatta and then baguette so you basically are running a triple support comp um with two dps and one main tank and you're using baguette as the off tank and so many of the dps that people are seeing um oop. I was kidding. yeah Many of the DPS people are seeing at the moment are, um, let me see if there's a, let's go back to Nimbani. Um, you end up with McCree, um, Widow, I'm trying to remember what else, Junkrat, um, Fair is being used more often, but a lot of people are just seeing that the, um, that they're just, the damage is very different and a lot of the dive characters um are not being played because they just don't fit and that's what a lot of people are are seeing is that trace is not being played because she doesn't fit in a non-dive um she can but um not in a dive format and a lot of people think that um dive is the ideology really overwatch is a dive ideology you the only difference with dive is that everyone's mobile so you should always be calling focus targets and everything so that's always a the bonus um okay now we're moving on to different comps at the moment the Arisa comps that are coming up so there's a couple of instances that we're having um, where there's news of big teams trying out um, Arisa-based comps. Um, a lot of them at the moment aren't using the Baguette, but that was for um, pre-Baguette patch. Um, that's pretty much it. Ah, I missed that one. Um, but yeah, basically, there's there was news that I, that I heard of the other day um basically um one one of the overwatch twitch streamers um jane um was doing kind of like a review of the new hanzo with mingachu who's the um basically the projectile dps for nyxl's academy team basically to put it into perspective flower is the hit scan dps in that team so that's a good um, explanation for that. But he was talking 
and he mentioned how they are working on a Arisa dive comp where they basically have a Winston Diva and the Arisa throws her barrier and uses halt and they dive the halt slash barrier. And so that's an interesting thing. Very, rem <laughs> very, um, sounds a lot like the two lanterns comp, um, from at least my point of view. Um, so yeah, that's, it's going to be interesting to see if some of the stuff that are two lanterns type starts coming out of the woodwork, um, because dive's just basically going to die. People are saying dive's just dead. Um, if, if the, if the back gets pretty good, then the dive just can't stay alive. Uh, that's pretty much it. All you need is, is baguette to hit her shifts and her shield bashes and have her armor up. And you basically get so much value out of it. Um, and then the other one, which is a little more seen, is the Overwatch Contenders team called Element Mystic. So they are a Korean team. And um, they were basically fabled as one, probably the best Korean team um, in Contenders. But they kind of threw... I think they, it was, basically they had their diva out in like their like finals match to get into the, the main Overwatch contenders to possibly, um, but basically what the idea is, is so that they're going to run a, you guys need a um, sorry, Abram, I'm going to have to mute you. Um, so mainly um what happens is they have in Arissa up here so so yeah this is a this is a comp that um people this team would run and basically what happens is you'll have an Arissa standing up here and you would have the comp runs pretty much they run it on every map and what happens is is you have the Arissa, you have um, um, mute Garrett. There we go. Um, just did. So what happens is you have the Arissa always, and you have the Mercy always, and you have a Diva always, which is very reminiscent of our um, Two Lanterns comp, where you usually used to have a Mercy, which can be switched out and the basic idea is you run a bunker style and when they dive you then you can just move around and um you basically want to position yourself in certain ways get a bunch of healing um cover some flanks and a lot of the stuff is you don't have everything on the bag the orissa not bag yet um very similar to our comp um but Basically, the idea is if they actually get past your defenses because you're playing a bunker style, then the D.Va jumps into the air and ults, and the Mercy flies up to that and then runs over to the Arissa. Well, not necessarily fly over, but basically goes to the where the Arissa died and then reses her. And the idea is that the, the D.Va bomb creates a pressure zone of absolute which basically means the mercy has a free way to just res and if the other team tries to get in the way they just die and so the team won't even try that that's basically what happens so that's pretty much the gist of that they run it on pretty much every comp it's pretty insane how how often they run in they're very successful on it um yeah it's very much like the two lanterns so, so they claim they're a hundred percent successful on it. they th they're not a hundred percent successful um and they used to be but then their diva player who's their best player had to leave and they ended up losing but yeah they were pretty formidable and a lot of even even the NYXL Academy team says that their their comp basically works every single time. 
they it's a hundred percent win rate um where they just run Arisa dive and it sounds a lot like two lanterns comp they probably don't use the shield as aggressively but they um rely more on the halt ability from what i heard um as the dive which works i'm completely okay with that um yeah i find it very interesting so we have we have this korean team getting a lot of success in actual play with them, this Arisa comp, a very similar Arisa comp, and then we have um, a, an academy team saying that they're actually working on this comp. So I'm I'm very curious to see um, if a, an Overwatch League team is going to start doing this style comp, um, <laughs> because it well. I know they they already have a style of comp. LA Valiant's doing one very similar on Temple of Anubis, and they're very successful on that one. Um, but they they stopped creating that pressure zone a lot of the times. So, anything else that you wanted to add as kind of um, how comp, how the comp works and such, and then. Um, well, at the moment, um, I'll open it up to questions while Garrett might finalize some of his ideas. No, I, I just like how supports are finally getting the attention they deserve to, uh, you know, have a triple support meta. I agree. You know, I'm a mercy man. This is great. Yeah. Um. You know, they had a 3 DPS meta. You know, not not professionally, of course. That, that was kind of a actually they just, did. They've they had did they? yeah, they've had a three DPS meta. The no, there was a triple tank meta. The most known one and the most common one was um the three DPS meta on Oasis, where people would run farm far mercy and a a tracer and soldier, and that was basically how they ran. Um, how do you think a baguette would work in these Arisa comps? I think she misses well with them, like you said. Yeah. But, um, I think just overall, she's right now at least she's kind of like the um, the Mercy update. Yeah. It's really hard not to play without her. Yeah. I I see element. Not to play with her. Yeah. Or what? Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see um, Element Mystic in the future running a triple tank and having but having Baguette be that third tank where they have the Diva and Arissa and then they have a Baguette just to keep that CC and just have the Baguette stand next to the Arissa and protect her. I, I think that's a common thing that's going to happen is you're going to see these Arissa bunker comps where the baguette's standing next to the Arissa and just waiting for someone to get close to the Arissa. Um, and then, like, the the dive prospects, I don't think she'll work with a dive, um, mainly just because if you want her to dive, she goes in and she kind of stays in there for a little long, and then getting out's a little entertaining. Um, but that's pretty much, pretty much it. Um, are you okay there, Garrett? You just said you had lag. Uh, yeah, he's having some bad lag at the moment. Um, okay, so, yep. Um, I think that's a good place to end it. Does anyone have any questions in the chat? If you have any questions on YouTube, just go ahead and put them um, in the comments and I'll answer them. Um, of course, there's a lot of different ideas with this. Um, a lot of this was basically news and, and idea based. Um, I think big things to take away from this is people need to stop forcing Reinhardt into a baguette comp um, unless you know that you're going to have a better, um, better opportunity against the other Reinhardt. Um, but I think Arissa is a really good, a really good, in a really good position, um, to take, take over pretty much. And that we might see a lot of Arissa based comps that look very similar to our fabled two lanterns comp. Um, 
And if Twitch has any questions, go ahead and ask. I'll stay here for about five minutes um, if anyone has any questions, and then we'll move on. Um, if you are on YouTube right now, we do, of course, live stream this every um, Friday about 3 o'clock. So, oh, well, we're doing 3 o'clock now, but we usually do 5.30, so it might change. Um, the Basically, if you want to keep up to date, make sure you just follow me on Twitch if you want to fall, want to watch these live and answer live. I will basically interact with chat. We've had um, a couple of questions um, that I've answered so far. So, yeah, you can go ahead and do that. Um, basically, um, and if you're, of course, watching this on Twitch and you want to see the full thing, I do have a YouTube channel that I post all of these to, all the strat chats, and I've also been posting daily um, some stuff if you guys want. Um, not always Overwatch and not always serious. Sometimes serious, but not always. Um, usually, it's just a bunch of memes. Um, kind of how I roll. Um, but yeah, um, we have no questions, so I guess that's it. Um, Garrett, are you back? Oh, yeah, I'm back. back yeah. Ban, ban it. Um, do you have any final things before we sign off? No. Cool. Really. Well, that's going to be uh, it. I like this meta. This is an awesome meta. Yeah. Uh, everyone's hating on it, but you know what? It's it's ironic. They're like, oh, support suck, and then it's all like, oh, they can't live without them. How about that? Yeah. Um. Ooh. One idea. How do you think dive could be ran? So let's oh, say yeah. if you were trying to force dive, how would you force dive? <sighs> God, I'm gonna have to go back and look at the characters again. Yeah. Um, honestly, I think the best kind of dive would be just the positioning dive. Not, not even necessarily the dive itself, just like getting on a high ground above a team and jumping on them. Yeah. Uh, I would I would almost say if you're forcing dive, I would run Doomfist. Maybe a rushdown? Yeah. A kind of dive like a rushdown? Yeah. I, I would personally like to run Doomfist. If I was forcing dive, I think because Winston's no longer available, but no. Diva can still be pretty viable in a dive. Yeah, yeah, Diva's viability isn't completely gone, um, but she probably won't be played as m much if Baguette's taking her position. Granted, she'll be played if Baguette's not taking her position. Um, I think I think a big thing that will happen is if someone tries to run dive. They'll try to Doomfist and basically try oh. to punch the baguette before she can do anything. Hey. Just like the uh, New York Excelsior were saying, uh, they're running a Genji with that Arisa dive. That's also viable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think dive's completely I mean, dead. Bar is not really dive material, I don't think, but... Definitely yeah. counters the Brigitte if they're running one. Yeah. I think a lot of it is if you can distract the Brigitte or push her away. Then then you get... If you out-CC the Baguette, then you're golden. Because she's not really that hard to kill. You just have to burst her down. And just make sure that you can get around her. Because also her shield is one way, so she would be throwing around. But yeah think that's going to be it for us today um thanks for watching and of course like subscribe comment if you're on youtube follow me on twitch to keep up to date subscribe to me on youtube to keep up to date with that stuff too um yeah that's gonna to be it for me um so that'll be it bye